What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. This is a Third Person Podcast. My name is Chris, and with me tonight, you can see this is not Mike. This is Tom. Tom is my brother. What's up, Tom? What's up, guys? How you doing? He's he's my real. He's actually my my real brother. He's my blood brother. He's yeah. We know, look alike. We, we I guess we do look alike. Uh, guys, we're talking preacher. We haven't done a preacher video on this channel yet, but. Uh, we love Preacher a lot, and we decided we're going to do it. Uh, as you can see, we're, we're going to be talking episodes uh, one, two, and three from season three. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a late start, so we're going to we're going to encompass the first three episodes and maybe talk a little bit about the previous season. So, if you guys haven't seen this show, Preacher, it was a comic book, and now it's brought to uh, television for AMC. This is another AMC joint. We love these AMC shows, mm -hmm. and uh, Seth 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 Rogen. Um, uh, is bringing this to the screen for us. And again, this is the third season. You know, the, every season has been drastically different than, than the last. And Well, maybe not drastically, but they, they've been different, you know. And, All just crazy, wacky things going on. Right. So the, the so if you haven't seen it, season one is, a, is kind of a prequel to the comic series. And then season two starts off their road trip, which is basically what the comics is. The comics are... They go on this. The three characters go on the on road trips, and and they're trying to find God. God is missing. The whole premise of the show is God is missing. The main character Jesse Custer has um, a an entity inside of him called Genesis, which is essentially the voice of God, and it's like a creation that a a, a, a demon a, a, and a, and an angel basically created this thing by getting together, and now it found Jesse as a host on Earth, and. So, uh, so if you haven't seen the first two seasons, go watch them. It's a very cool show. This season uh, finds Jesse going back to his uh, familiar home and meeting back up with his grandmother, who's essentially just a, a witch. And you see the couple of people in his life, uh, CT and Jody, are the two people that he grew up with in the house, and they're the caretakers of the of the, the where they live. And it's not—I want to say it's a plantation, but it's not really. Right, it's kind of like a, just like a big manor. Yeah, exactly. It's just a manor hidden in the woods somewhere. It seems like. Yeah, and and what happens is she's a witch, and she's been living for years and years by taking uh, the family businesses that they take souls. So this whole world is supernatural. It's you know it's it's got it's got a lot of these. It's got a little bit of magic, a little bit of of religion, uh, a little you know. And when I say religion, I mean like the the mass outskirts of religion meaning like it takes like the the broad ideas of god and jesus and and everything and 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 puts it into this supernatural magic-y type of wacky world right right so um so this season you know like i said uh um we find him back at his house his old house where he used to work for his grandmother collecting souls so she could take the souls and she continue and she basically remains immortal and um his his girlfriend tulip who is the one of the other characters? Jesse's girlfriend Tulip, um, played by the wonderful Ruth Nega. She's she's amazing. Um, Jesse Custer is is played by Dominic Cooper, and then you have Cassidy, who is the vampire, played by Joseph Gilgan. And uh, these three together have just made the show absolutely amazing. Right, hundred percent. Right, uh, and we've got a bunch of other characters in there that we'll talk about as we go on. So. Long story short, if you haven't seen the first two seasons, get up on that. Get, but if you have, then and you've watched these first three episodes, let, you know. Let's let's start getting into it. So, I guess Tom, the best way to go is we'll start out by him uh, at the end of season two. The um, his girlfriend, uh, I was gonna call her Ruth, <laughs> <laughs> Tulip O'Hare. She gets shot um, by the the Grail, who is led by Hair Star, who is um, you know they Just another awesome crazy character of the show. yep yep they are uh paid by played by pip torns he, he's amazing they want what do they want to do they want to the grail wants to knows that god is missing wants to fill the void right by keeping christianity alive and so That's they're right. trying to find the savior yep. and the funny thing about that is that the state the actual descendant of jesus <laughs> is i guess they i guess he was inbred or something because he's 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 I won't even say he's on spectrum. He's way off spectrum. He's, he's gone. He's oh, yeah, he's, he's totally gone. unibrow. He's eating dirt type of type of situation. He's, he calls himself Humperdoo. So they want so Hair Star and 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 the Grail organization understand and know that Jesse has this 
entity, Genesis, and, and Jesse has the power to speak the word of God, and, and, and they have to, whatever, whatever he says, people have to do, right? So, yeah, so, they, so they're looking for him to be the savior, and that's what they want. So that's where we start out in the beginning of this. So she ends up, Tulip ends up getting shot, and he brings her back to his uh, grandmother. Uh, what, what was the grandma's name again? I have a hard time pronouncing it. It's, uh, it's like Madame L'Angel or something like that. It's basically Madame... L apostrophe angel, I think. Oh, Langell. Yeah, yeah, Langell. That's it. Right. That's it. It's Langell. That's, yeah, that's, that's their family name. Cause his right. name is, his name is Langell. That's his, that was his mother's name. His dad's name is Custer, but he, right. he's Langell. Um, yeah, I'm just, I was just looking at the name. So that's the main arc of the first episode of the season is basically bringing Tulip back to life and her journey through the, through purgatory and what they need to do and they need some uh looks like they need um certain ingredients that oh her favorite needs. song her favorite oh, cereal favorite. toenails yeah, all hair stuff. yeah all but this right. junk and I'm dude purgatory was awesome it was set up oh. as if it was a sitcom and kind of going through her whole childhood right i felt it was like a like a like a one-man show play that yeah you yeah where the set is just kind of sitting in the middle of a much bigger stage Right. Yeah, I love that whole thing. And and again, it's like the mark of a good show is show me, don't tell me, right? Show, don't tell. Yeah. And through that, they showed you some backstory on her father and that relationship and some of the things that he's passed down to her, which kind of says something later on, I think in the third episode or second episode about how she can't do anything right or something like that. Well, that was no, I think that was in the first one. They call it the curse of the O'Hare. Or he said that in the first, in the first episode. So she's, she's got this in her head. Oh, I have this curse of the O'Hare. Her mom's her mom was, you know, turning tricks while she was out, you know, sitting in the living room. Like that was that. The dad comes back from jail, tries to go straight. You know, this whole big right. story. It was amazing. And this whole time it's played out, they're trying to get her to come back to life. And they're trying and so, you know, knocking on the door, that was them knocking on the door, yet she thought it was death. Oh no, was that death? I think Other they said around. that Other way around. It was it was the it was if she opened to do, the door to to death right she um, die yeah, yeah. she in, the, in her purgatory she thinks it's just the phone. police to come in and get her yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then and then they were on the phone jesse was on the phone pulling right. her out so she gets out comes back to life right before she comes back she sees god and again if you're following the show you'll know that in season two we saw god they found god and he was in a um a dog, su- a dog, dog. submission suit right. in a sex club or some some weird thing yep. at the basement of a club so he's been just basically on earth slumming it around, just being whatever. So we see him, and he points out into the distance, and she wakes up. She comes back to life. And that was essentially episode one, right? That's right. Episode two, uh, you know, so now she's she's kind of resting up, and, and, you know, Jesse's like, I love you, and, you know, I, mi- I need you, I miss you, it's you and me, you and me. Meanwhile, we forgot to mention in episode one, Jesse and Cassidy have this fight because Cassidy – has has been like you know what i i love her i i want her to, you know he tried to make her a vampire in this in the finale of season two and jesse right. wouldn't let her because right. he knew that i'm going to take her to my grandmother and she's going to bring her back to life cassie didn't know this so he had no clue that all of this was happening and that this was the thing right um but he ends up they're having a fight and he ends up telling a telling jesse that he slept with her that they ended up they you know cassidy and tulip slept together you know and, and you know it's not something, you know, Jesse, like, I guess he, perspective, he, he's not really even, like, caring about that because he's never mentioned it since. They don't really talk about it, right? He kind of just doesn't even acknowledge what happened between uh, Tulip and... Um, and him and, and Cassidy. Uh, Cassidy, there we go. Yeah, it's true. So it's, we- it's weird because, you know... At, at one point in the third episode, he says, "You know, you're my best friend." He's like, "You've never said that to me." He's like, "No, I'm pretty sure I have." He's like, "He's like, well, I'm saying yeah, it now, whatever." Close. Yeah, not even close. He's yeah, so, so you know, so in in episode two, we get the fact that we get this backstory now. What what did Jesse actually do? Jesse got the souls. He got the people to to make packs with his grandmother and keep her alive and whatever. And you know, uh, we end up seeing that he's he's basically going to be stuck there. Um, to, to pay for this to, the the payment for tulip being brought back to life is a, is a is this blood pack thing 
where he puts his blood on a handkerchief and this is how she controls these this is the signed document this is the Almost you know like what i mean voodoo doll type of control right right it was actually wasn't it in was it the second, second episode where yeah. he kind of rings it yeah so poking him right, right right so we get so we get that backstory and we also get that uh hair star we see hair star and he's again trying to keep christianity and trying to get people to maintain and um i guess i guess the word's getting out that that god is is missing and so he ends up in india talking to harry krishna and he's like do you accept you know humper humper do as your as your lord and savior and they're like nope you know and so they wipe out it's just a bloody mess the show is the show's amazing an awesome an awesome fight scene he's just so nonchalant about it about the violence around him and even almost getting shot he's just he's so he's bored of it and he's just trying to get through it uh to finish what he needs to do which is yeah. you know do you accept or not if not well you're dead well you're dead yeah so, yeah. yeah that was fun yeah he's he, he's, he's a, such a... he's a super trained soldier killer right you know, remember back in i think it was second season yeah. when they show his training and all the tests he had to pass and he was just so bored by it even back then he would he remember he like killed the one dude and he like broke the yeah. other guy he's just like he's such an amazing character i'm so glad that they brought well, him the way the right show now. the way the show shows you these things and bring and tells story um it's just such a it's so amusing it's just done in such an amusing way yeah that it keeps you engaged and it's just so funny it's like a, it's dark comedy pretty much, but it's just so funny. And even a villain could be someone you almost root for because he's just he's just an instant favorite. Absolutely, that's man. Like pretty much every character in the show that's um, that they're not, even if they're not part of the main cast, they're rounded out so well. Yeah. That you like I said, you end up rooting for them, and and actually you're so interested because they do show backstory. They do show how this person came to be and why they are the way they are. That. You just you actually you you care for them, and that's again important when you're watching the show to be invested in it yeah. as a whole. It's a, it's it's a testament to the people that they've gotten to be in this show. You know, yeah. even if the story, yeah, even if the story's a little lacking, it's the it's it's the you know because there are there are some some lulls, right? But it's the people that are playing these characters. Like the characters are so compelling. Like you said, that you just want to watch them and you want to follow along, right. which is what happens this time around, you know? So Jesse has made this deal with Hairstar. star. Um, so Jesse can't use Genesis right now, because if you remember, he gave 1% of his soul to the, uh, the saint of killers because he needed to send him away and, and he couldn't send him back to hell without a soul. He's already sent, um, our space back to, uh, you know, back to, he sent him to hell. We haven't even seen, we yet. haven't seen him We're, yet. No, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's so another interesting, uh, storytelling device when he's around, it's great. Right. So we haven't seen our space yet, but he sent him to hell. So he, so to do this to the saint, he had to give him a, a you know, uh, 1% of his, of his soul. I love this idea of the business of souls i absolutely love this right. idea so that's what i'm saying this 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 world has this fantastical supernatural you know his the langels have been dealing in this in souls and their competitors across the way the boyds have also which we'll get to in, in the next episode but the boyds have also they're also in the business of souls and and like it's this weird backwoods backcountry fight it's like to... two small town businesses right right like two like auto parts businesses or florists out. or yeah. or or yeah. pumpkin right. sellers right? right and it's just like you said previously it's just so nonchalant Every... that's another nonchalant thing it's just like this is the world is being fleshed out in such a great way so he you know so he said you know he... hair star promises uh jesse the that percent back of his soul if he agrees to be the savior and so jesse is like at this point Yes, I'm gonna. I've told him I'm gonna do this, and he didn't tell. Here's the thing: Jesse's Jesse's a very selfish guy, and he's a bit of an a hole, and he doesn't let anybody know his plans. So when things go down, they're like, "Well, what the hell?" And he's like, "Oh wait, yeah, no, I should have told you this was my plan." All you know, whatever, you know. And that's why Tulip and, and Tulip and Cassidy. That's the problem that they have with him. Besides the fact that when he had Genesis, he was using it on them. Oh, he's being a dick, yeah. Yeah, he is. He's such a dick. And you're right. He doesn't tell them what his plans are. He keeps them out of the loop, and they're always offended by that, and they should be. 
because they're supposed to be, you know, a team and it's really just him and everybody else. That right? was the whole and second season. Right. right. It was right. Jesse by himself. Right. And them fending for himself. And he expects them to just sit around and wait for him all the time. Right. Just stay here. Just stay here while he goes out and does his thing. Because I guess he feels like he's the only one that can do it, maybe. But it's it's totally condescending towards those two. And, and they, they just, you know, it's like they can't live without him, but they, they're just sick of him at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's it, again, that that's the beauty of it. That's the dichotomy of this relationship. And it's also a bit of a love triangle, you know, that Jesse yeah. refuses to see, but Cassidy and Tulip. So... In the in, in the at the end of episode two, he calls Hairstar and says, "Look, I'll, I'll do this thing." He comes back from India, and at the same time, they're fighting the Boyds. The Boyds show up, right, and they kind of send this little, right, that little voodoo that the, the, they're shooting right. goats at them, right, which is which <laughs> that is was a, once again like in the middle of this violence. It's like, oh yeah, they're just gonna shoot goats at you. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, um, and you know, let's briefly talk about CT and and uh, Jody. So Jody's the muscle of the family, big dude, ponytail. He's the only guy Jesse Custer's never beat up. You know, what I mean, he's never bested this guy. Right. And it was this episode, I think, that he fights it. Was it this episode where he fights no, I think him? It's the first one, still might have been the first one because yeah, he comes home and file of something that they needed. To, yeah, that they needed. Oh, that's right. They had to go get that thing, and they got it. Right. They he got it from the Boyds and. And then you have CT, who's the weirdo, kind of perv, slash doctor, slash... He's, he has a lot of different roles on the farm. But also, too, don't forget, Jody is, is the guy who killed... Thank uh, you, yeah. Jesse's father. Jesse's father, right, yeah. You know, And it, so it, it's strange because there's that hatred there, but also it, there's like a... Family. A father, son. Yeah, uncle. or at least so an maybe, uncle. Maybe an uncle. Okay, maybe an yeah, uncle, exactly. yeah. Maybe there's like an uncle, but there's... But it's just it's a very strained and very layered relationship, and I, you know you, you've got to appreciate that too. The best, um, you know what, man? I love, I love how these characters are. It, they're, they're acted so well that it's just like it is what it is. Like, oh yeah, whatever. Jody killed my dad, but I have to go work with him right now. Everything in the world is it's that. just yeah, it's Everything. just. Violent. And if you're if you're not paying attention. Right. I mean, it's not it's a, it's not it's not a it's not a procedural where you have to, like, layer every little clue. But it's 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 the subtlety of the dialogue in the story where you're like, oh, my God, wait a minute. That is that guy. Or, you know, the, oh, my God, I, totally I forgot that Cassidy's a vampire. You know what I mean? Like, it's like these little things. Yeah. That... By the way, I, want, I do want to talk about Cassidy. Um, yeah. And how, you know, episode one the whole series starts off with him on a plane, just kicking ass. Right. Right. He's such a badass. I mean, he, then he falls out of a plane and puts himself back together, but he's such a badass. But like the rest of the series, he hasn't done, he hasn't done anything, anything like that. And I think in the comics, I was looking on Reddit today that he's actually, um, he wasn't, I think in the comics, he can't fight. So maybe they're just kind of going back to, to, you know, the, the original content, but I'd love, I just, I want to see him kick some more ass, you know? Yeah, I, I was like be shredding people, you know, when he needs to. I, I, I agree. And I think he's not because he's following Jesse. Like Jesse says, lay low, don't be a vampire. But also too, if you, if he were to do it, there'd never be a villain because he would just rip them apart and then they're done. Right. So it's kind of like. Yeah, and you know what? To keep, to keep the plot interesting. Cause if he's, he's so powerful, like he would just beat the crap out of you i mean he was yeah if he, he was if he was doing everything like he did on the in that plane fight scene because he, he was like a secret double agent in that scene yeah right and then for the rest of the the, the series i mean him and jesse tussle but there shouldn't even really be any competition i mean you should just shred them apart but i guess that's part of the reason why is because everything would be too easy for all of them so yeah and and like like you said it might be that they're trying to get more more to form with the comic and also that He's based, like I said, like he he's he hasn't had a friend, you know what I mean? And he sees Jesse as like his best friend, and he said that in the first season, even. And then in the second season, he was very much his lapdog, like he just listened to him. But then it was towards the end of the season that he was like, "Why am I listening to this guy? He's not even right about stuff." Right. Now we're at the point where he's starting to be like, "Oh, but also, you see that they're smart." I feel because they put Cassidy in a place where he really can't vamp out. Like, what are you, who's he going to fight? He's got no one to fight right now. 
Right. He's not going to fight but, CT. And, and, you're you not going to fight they this. Capture, like just like they did in episode three, they they can find a way to capture him. Well, and, right. So we'll get to that in a second yeah. because the thing with that is is like uh, I'm sorry, but, but you know, go back to the other point about him not doing anything. It's that he, like I said, there's nothing. There's nothing for him to really do. Plus, it's also not his bag. Like he's not. He he really just wants to protect Tulip now, and what Jesse's doing isn't. Again, Jesse's off doing Jesse things, and he's not really like they just showed up to like she got out of the house in episode two to fire the gun and just kind of like I'm not sitting around anymore. He goes right, out there just I, to be with her. Right. I think Jesse's still his main quest is finding God. Yeah. Well, now it is now that he's gotten. But no, now he wants to get out of uh, from underneath his grandmother's. Well, thumb. I think off to this point, it was all about that, right? right? Just finding out what happened to God. You know, he's just been like one track mind this whole time. Now, of course, he's stuck in this situation that, you know, it's kind of, it's a really cool villain. It reminds me of like a really good, uh, one of the true blood villains. Yeah. Where yeah. They're, um, they're really fun. Like this grandma, she's really fun. And uh, she just seems like, wow. You don't know I'm what she's going to do next. Because yeah. like, uh, uh, what's his name? CT tells her like, you can't, you can't beat her. So don't even try. Don't, don't rustle her up because you just, you can't beat her no matter yeah, how Yeah, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's what I love about that. So um, just to finish off episode two, uh, Star shows up, gives Jesse basically a placebo saying, you know, just to give him that test. And he of course tries to use the, the voice on him because right. Jesse ends up finally telling uh, Tulip, this is my plan. I'm sorry. I know I called them and whatever, but this is my plan. I'm going to get my thing back. I'm going to kill everybody. We're going to go kill them. And then we're going to go find God. She's like, oh, okay. So now she's flipped and been like, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to follow him. But sees sees them together, Star and Jesse together, and, and starts to flip. She's like, oh, well, no, that's not, you know. So she ends up, he's about to go with, with Star to get the, to get his soul. She shows up and wipes out all the, all the grail people thinking she's helping Jesse, thinking that Jesse's in duress, you know, and, and, and obviously it wasn't. And that's also when we see, you know, because, uh, she realizes, uh, you know, Madame Langelle realizes that Jesse was going to leave or try attempt to leave rings out that thing the handkerchief, the blood mm-hmm. pack chokes yet. So we got to see all this stuff happen. And what's most important to take away, I think is that tulip at that point was like, it reinforced the curse of the O'Hares. Right. To her. That's in the moment. Yeah. She said that. Right. So she says, I'm now going to follow Jesse. And so in the beginning of episode three, we're getting out of episode three, you know, they attacked the Boyds and she, you know, she, oh, I haven't made a car bomb since I was a kid or whatever, right? And and Cassidy's like, why don't we just keep driving? Why do we have to do what Jesse says? And and she's like, because we're on a job and we're gonna follow Jesse. So she's now now she's now she's where Cassidy was in like season one, in the beginning of two. She's now following. So now their roles have reversed, man. Because it used to be Cassidy was telling Tulip, no, 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 we're gonna follow Jesse. Now Tulip's in that spot and he's in the spot where he wants to leave, True. right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I think also Tulip's now dealing with some guilt over what she did with the Grail. Yes. So, well, that's that's the main reason. Yeah. Right. And here's the other funny thing: she's spoken to God. <laughs> she's actually she actually and called hasn't God told out. Told anybody, by the way. And she hasn't told anybody yet. Right. So season three, season three, episode three uh, was actually pretty cool. So we start out with. The fact that Tulip wants to fight God, calls God out. He's in that dog suit, shows up in his in his godly form. She's like, wait, you look like the actor that that they killed. And he's like, ah, I figured it'd be the easiest thing, whatever, you know? And which I thought was hilarious, dude, because that guy's hilarious. I love it. I love what that. You, what was the sentence you kept saying? By design? By design, right, yeah. Yeah. Everything's by design. And she's like, mm, no. No, I think you're. I think you're BSing me. I don't think this is by design. You're just. I don't. She's like. I don't think you. I don't think you even know what you're doing here. I think you're just. She's like. You're just basically slumming it. You have no design. You can just say whatever you want, but you don't. And he's like, "Don't test me." And he like throws her against the thing. She gets right up and is like, "I'm gonna kick your ass." She's like, "Wait." She's like, "You come back. I'm gonna kick your ass." Like, dude, I was like, "That's great." She didn't yeah, give I a thought shit. She'd be scared at that point, right? No, nope. she'd just be scared, but no, she's not. No, that's her, and that's a testament to who she is, which is, you know, which is pretty awesome. So, so that was a really fun thing. We also see Tulip enter Madame Langell's um, room, 
and trying to help Jesse and finding this pact and finds a complete just tons of these things sitting in drawers. So this woman has got a hold on so many people, right? Um, and um, what what else happens in this one, man? I mean, the, the, you know, there, there was a lot, dude. So well, this episode too. So Cassidy's hurt. He gets shot in se- in season. Dang it. Episode he's two. Up in bed, and uh, he's drinking his blood packs, and he's he's healing. Right. Well, first, and, well, first, CT. You know, he's talking to CT, and CT's like, "Wow, you you're healing up." And he tells C because now he's taking that. What was he taking? That was it. The gas or something? Some sort of. They're on some sort of drug. Whatever that. And he, whatever and that he, gas mask is. and it made him very loose, loose lipped, and he's sitting here going, yep. "Oh, I've been this, that, this, that." And he's like, "Where are all your scars?" He's like, "I." Right. You know, I, I've got you know, I'm, I'm I'm limber. He says or something. Yeah, I'm nimble. Or something nimble like or some that. shit. Yeah. And he's the like, you kind of lose that 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 word he says there. So yeah, so so now he's on. So now CT is a little bit on to him. He's drinking the blood, like you said. Jesse finds out. You know, he's talking to Jody. And he's like, oh, that guy heals real quick. He's like, how do you mean how quick? You know, and he's like, Jesse's like, dang it. <laughs> he's like, not again. So he goes up and he's and this is when he has that conversation. Like, you're my best friend. He's like, you never told me this or whatever and. You know, so now Jesse manipulating him in that moment. I yeah, think. but do you think he? Do you think that it's? Do you think it's genuine, at no. all? No, not even a little. No, I think he's. I think he was manipulating Cassidy. See, the thing is, he's being a dick, but it's trying. He's trying to keep them safe, right? Like, he just sucks at it. Yeah, we all want Cassidy to heal up. It's cool to see, but like he can't. He can't show them that because, and he and explains to Cassidy. Remember that that picture downstairs. Cassidy remembered it. They hang it, hang it, yeah, for, yeah, know, for sun, for the sunrise. So you know, he's. I, I don't think it was genuine at all. I think he was just trying to manipulate him to actually keep him safe. Yeah. So, you know, either way, I. I mean, I. Uh, man, I don't know. I'd like to think that there's a little bit. I, I'd like to think that he he understands where Tulip and Jet, Tulip and Cassidy, what what they mean to him. You know what I mean? I think he does. But I think he's 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 getting one tracked. He's very. He just. I need to do this so I can go do this. You know. And like we I said, think in the end, his intentions are to save everybody and do the right thing, right? But I just yeah. think, he, like, like we talked about, he doesn't include them in his plans, and he's not always. He tries to. He's trying to. He has keeping their best interest in mind, but he always doesn't always do the right thing for them, right? Even he, in trying to keep them safe. Yeah, he doesn't know how. He doesn't. He absolutely doesn't know how to do it. Right. So he shouldn't really take that 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 role on if he couldn't. If he can't, yeah, you know, but he's going to do it anyway out. because that's yeah, that's what Jesse do does, right? Um, so uh, what about uh, real quick, man? That we got to see what the blood pact actually does, and um, so it, it, I guess years ago this couple comes and they pay off their <laughs> their blood pack. That's crazy. And he's like, "This is nothing." He's like, "We're done." And and the, and the husband rips the the handkerchief in half and turns around, and his wife is just <laughs> split in half, like. Yeah, that was holy awesome. crap! Like that's yeah, what I'm man, saying. Like that's what's that so cool. Awesome. It's so sometimes a show um, is so in your face yeah. with things, but yeah. it's so and especially with the blood and the gore, and it was just so perfect to to show you like this is serious here. Like yeah. this is not just some napkin. Yeah. He even said like some fifty nine cent napkin or something like that. Yeah. At some point, but what the power it holds is it's crazy. That was yeah. a great thing. So uh, I guess let's get back to what you said about Cassidy. So he ends up, he heal, he drinks a bloody seal in himself. Jesse re- reopens the wound. He's like, you got to stop. You got to, then he tells him to get out. He's like, you know what? You need to leave. Just, just leave. This isn't, they're going to find you out, blah, blah, blah. Cassidy can't help himself. He's got to go look for blood. He eats the chicken, gets caught. He's being hung. So that's, that's right. where that ends. Yeah. And, and well, Jody no. T are on to him, right? So they, they kind of show these right. little nuances in Jody, especially as he keeps kind of doing this and look, doing like this every yeah. time you know, he's mentioned, and they kind of question him a little bit. And uh, you know, again, CT CT comes off as like you think he's a real dumbass, but he's not. You know, he's got him figured out. Um, again, great, great played like it's just just like I don't know, man. What's that guy? These two guys are just they're so they're accents. All the are we calling them? Were we calling them T C T or T C? Oh, we call them C T. It's, it's T C. Sorry, yeah. sorry, man. Sorry, yeah. Colin Cunningham. Yeah, um, but it, you know, if these two guys and and their accents that they're pulling off, it's and it, 
just amazing, like amazing acting work. Totally. It's almost like, I don't know, is it New Orleans? It's like a, I don't even know. They're in, I yeah, think. Angelville. It's supposed to be in New Orleans, I th- think. Yeah. Right. That's right. But they, they uh, I was reading something today how they, they had to change that up a little bit. Um, Seth Rogen talked about changing that up because of, um, I just think the logistics of it and they wanted to create a little more of a backstory. So they need, they put them in a different place than just to buy you out. Right. Yeah. Need more people around to to, like thresh this out a little bit, but they do use, but they do go put the people in the swamp. Remember whenever the, the bodies of the souls that they take, they, they put them in the swamp. That's what he said. Remember, he's like, Oh, we got to get these bodies to the swamp at the end of episode two. He's like, we got to get these bodies to the swamp. Um, so back to Cassidy, right? So they, 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 they capture Cassidy. They're hanging him on the tree. Um, and then Jesse goes out there and, uh, you know, he's got a different idea of how to save him. He actually says to him, what did he say? I told you to leave. Or I told you. Yeah. He's like, I told you to leave. But then he figures out a way to hopefully save him. Right. And, uh, and that is to bring him to the tombs. Now, I don't really understand what the tombs are. Do you? So, okay. So at the end of episode two, we saw that the, the, the teacher who the pedophile teacher from way back when Jesse was a teenager right. being held there. He's been, he's been held there all these years because he couldn't pay. And there's definitely more people down there that couldn't pay. So that, so the two, so they're being kept alive somehow for some reason. Um, and we see that, you know, what's going to end up coming is, they're going to fight. It's like a fight club. So they're going to bring people down there to bring some money. And the tombs were a place where basically just a tourist trap that was literally, excuse me, a trap to get souls in. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. what Jesse's job was and and is again, once again, as we see him going around to the AA meetings or the glue huffing meetings. And, you know, Jody's taking him around glue town. You. <laughs> yeah, glue and you. So, yeah, Jesse's been, been working doing that get trying to get souls but it's it's kind of dried up out there and he's out of practice he tells jody and stuff uh so that's what we see him doing and you know just to finish what we were saying about cassidy right yeah he you know he gets caught and he gets put to the tombs and we see from the uh if like the coming attractions for the next episode it's gonna be uh they're gonna be fighting like jesse's gonna end up fighting him or something like that you know but like you said, it's. I think it's a cool. It was quick thinking on Jesse's part to try fu- to save Cassidy. Not, n- number one, try to save Cassidy. Number two, to do his job for his for Grandma because well, Grandma also said the alternative is it was open to tombs, right, to getting souls. Right. right, but I think she, I thought she meant as a tourist trap. Again, emphasis on trap. Uh, and right. he decided I'm going to do it this way, and I'm going to. You know what I mean? Because he's not dumb. He's a smart kid. You know, kid. I call him a kid. Well, but... Listen, we're not privy to his plans either. Right. <laughs> that's the, the whole point. We're never right. So, I mean, yeah. So, uh, all in all, I mean, uh, let's think. Was there anything else from this episode? Well, you had besides uh, 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 went over to visit the, uh, the voids. Yeah, I was trying to see if there was anything else in here before we got there. I figured we'd end okay. over there. I mean... Trying to think. I mean, obviously, if there's anything else we missed, I mean, you guys let us know. Um, but, yeah, so, all right, let's just, yeah. So, Tulip has over there because she she's, again, she's enamored with the fact that she messed up Curse of the, of the O'Hares. And she's trying she, to figure out, right, she's trying to figure out um, how to help Jesse now get out of this. Right. Um, because she knows she can't go and attack um, and then, uh, straight up. So she's trying to figure out some alternative way and she ends up with the Boyds. Yep. So Madam Boyd is another one who takes souls, obviously. And she's got a way bigger racket than, uh, grandma does. And they've got, you know, they're armed and they got this whole hotel or this motel, whatever the heck. And it's like, you know, she goes in there and did you catch on to that? Did you catch on right away to what? the fact that that younger woman was, Madam Boyd? No, I actually thought that she was still the assistant and it was a fake when you found out that it wasn't that the that that, that was Oh, that the assistant. whole thing was a yeah, sham. I, yeah, no, I didn't that, yeah, I, I didn't realize that. Uh, and then I kind of clicked later that oh, she's I get it now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why yeah. didn't she stay? Why didn't Tulip just stay and try to get help 
in killing Jesse's grandma. You would have thought that they'd want that, right? But instead, she just kind of she just kind of ducked out of there. Well, listen, that's a fight or flight situation. I think she was like because they she Boyd surprised her by being like, oh oh, where, where did you say Jesse was or what do you whatever? And she's oh, like, what? And what? she's like, oh, well, you ain't your name isn't. And she's like, oh, it's whatever his name is. And she's like, no, nope, that's not him. You're talking about Jesse Custer and you're Tulip O'Hare. And she's like, see ya. And she yeah. just dipped out, which was exactly. hilarious when she jumps out into the guys and then they threw her back in. Yeah, that was awesome. It's good. You didn't expect that to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm expecting her to go into the street or something. And like, she's like, nope, get thrown back in there. That, that was, was cool. so cool, man. Was it was cool. just fun. So, so, she's, so she remains at this point caught with uh with the boyds and you know what you're right man you know let's say maybe maybe she's gonna make a deal with that's them. what i thought but I, I actually yeah maybe it'll lead down that path i, I thought think would have been like okay listen i'm just here to help you get rid of this lady right i've been a thorn in your side the whole time yep and whatever 10 percent she's taking from you in business now i will kill her and you can have it all you yeah know? i think i think that's i agree with that i think that's where they're gonna this whole thing is gonna well, not the whole thing, but I think that's where we're going to end up seeing the conversation run. Um, so uh, the coming attractions for the next episode look insane. Like I said, it's, it looks like there's Jesse and, and Cassidy are going to fight in that fight club down in the tomb. That makes me sad, though. That makes me sad. I don't want to see them fight. But you know what? They kind of have some things to work out. Well, you know, I'm, well, yeah, well, you know that neither of them will die. So right. it should be safe and it'll be. So maybe that's right. I think you're right. I think that's how they'll maybe solve some of their uh, the issues between them two by actually just fighting. And I mean, I don't think there's a situation where they're like they have to fight their way out type of situation. But if that were to come down to it, they kind of make up while fighting. And then we get to see Cassidy kick some ass again. I hope to God that we do, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so in addition to those scenes, we oh, some of that. We did see the Saint of Killers again down in hell being sequestered by uh, none of, you know, Satan himself. None other than Bill Beelzebub himself is like, I think he says he wants to hire him right. or something right. to help him probably like get rid of Preacher or something again or something. I think I, I got. Do you want to just quickly talk about Saint of Killers, Saint of Killer? Is there any. Tell me, what do you want to say about him? That he's one of the coolest he's characters awesome. ever made for TV. He's actually, pretty damn scary. He's pretty fucking scary, I think. Right? Such a he's great a, dude. They, they play that bong bong like whenever he's whenever he's on the screen or he, or there's danger lurking because of him. They play a certain a certain instrument. Um, it's some sort of a bell, and it's just like just it's horror. It turns into like horror in that in that. You know, <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Graham McTavish. Okay. His name right. is Graham McTavish, which is a which is a sick ass name, right? I and if he's the same guy on on Outlander, actually. Um, ah, uh, we could research that later on. Um, uh, yeah, but he he is Scottish. Uh, but yeah, dude, he just I think I just he's, he's, yeah. He, okay. dude. He yeah, he's just he's just one of the coolest. And he know, but he's another true villain that they also gave you a ton of backstory on. Yep. So he's he's actually uh, a villain you feel uh, sympathy for uh, when you see what the, the he was stuck in his own personal hell. There's a whole another set to this this show mm -hmm. where um, you're stuck in hell, and hell is basically tailored <laughs> tailor made to whatever the person's personal hell is, and and his was when his family. Uh, every day he tried to, he's trying to save his family and he, he doesn't, he has to relive it over and over. And the only way out at one point was to agree to kill Jesse. Right. Well, that's when the two angels, right. When those, when the, uh, oh, that, that not to go off track, but that scene with the Fiori and DeBlanc yeah. in the hotel room. Oh my God. One of the coolest that, that. when they're fighting the other angel. Oh, it was great. That was one of the coolest scenes ever, that it keeps ever shot, flashing. man. Yeah, you know, it was great. If yeah. you if you don't remember that scene, go back into season go back one and watch, watch it. it. I'm sure it's on YouTube or something. Uh, if you haven't watched the show at all, you're in for a treat, um, especially with the first season. You know, season three, you you we're kind of used to all this wackiness at this point. Yeah, so you're getting a little numb to it, but. That first season, you're just constantly shaking your head in amusement of like, this is so crazy, and I love it. Yeah. I just it's uh and, and and like we said that's that's why that's why it's just it's it's a fun show it's just in every season has been different but we've but 
like we've talked about here is everything has led to a certain, you know what I mean? They've, they've maintained, they've been in these three different locations so far. And it's like every, everything is contained in its own thing, but there's all this backstory and they're, and they're lit in there. It's, it's a continued backstory. It's not like some things that happen and they forget, you know what I mean? Like definitely a slow burn. Right. And then I'm a big Reddit person and I love to every show that I follow, I go on Reddit and I just kind of see what the theories are and stuff. And, you know, probably I'm not the only one that feels the same way when it comes to them just kind of sitting around uh, like they were in season two. Season one, you didn't feel like that because there was a whole town. But season two, you, you feel like they are kind of sitting in this apartment the whole time. And now season three, um, we're you know, something different. They're, yeah, we're, we're in the middle of something. That's probably because I'm a dumb idiot who hasn't read the comics. So I'm sure, pretty sure if you read the comics, that's there's a certain reason for it. But this season, I feel. Um, they're doing a much better job at keeping it interesting and the slow yeah. burn, all the little reveals all make sense. It's all building towards something. And um, you're getting these little payoffs. You're getting the satisfaction. I think my satisfaction next week, hopefully you get to see Cassidy kick some ass. So that's pretty good. Yep. Um, but yeah, as, as overall, it's just a really kick-ass show. It's uh, it's an, it's niche, right? You'd have to say it's niche. Um you know, it's not going to have a huge audience like some of the other shows are, but um, it's just definitely one of the best shows out there. It's know, yeah, it's 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 it, exactly. I think I think you have to have. It's got a AMC is really good at creating shows that are for specific people, and they're really good shows. Like you know, Badlands. You know, like we do on this channel, and Walking Dead. We do on this channel. You know, and then we did Westworld. Like these are all different shows you know we've done the leftovers like we these are all niche shows you know I feel but like the, if you're if you're a, the, the, i feel uh you know a, the preacher people are the same as the legion people and the mr robot people right mr. yeah robot you know what yeah I, yeah i would agree you know it's all these shows that they always hover around this at the peak like three million or less but they all hover around even less than one million but they're the shows that are thought-provoking they make you think you know, if you just want to be a lazy TV show watcher, then these probably aren't the shows for you. Um, right, yeah. But even Preacher, I think, if you just want to have some good old fun, uh, I just wish it wasn't on so damn late. <laughs> but uh, I know, 10, 10 p.m. is rough. Yeah, well, it's because it's so gory and it's uh, the subject matters a little much. But, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a niche show, but if you give it a chance, I mean, it's just... One word is, like, you'd have to say, it's just amusing. yeah. I mean, when her, you, all the and, and cool because, for instance, now look at we're expecting this week. Most shows would pick up back in the tombs, right, and continue that last scene that we saw right at the end when they when they did that cutaway. Right. But this show is so good where they're probably going to show you some way off land, some other character that you're going to introduce. Like they always throw you off with something that you're not prepared for, you know. Yeah. And so you you're going to sit down, you're going to think, all right, I'm going to go and I'm going to. I'm going to watch this fight with the tombs, right? It's going to start out like that. Right. And it may, but it probably won't. It probably should start off in some other scene. Like you're not even expecting. Well, it's probably, gonna yeah, it, we're going to be know? in hell. I mean, we might even get to see our face, you know, like who knows what we're going to see. Like, yeah, I absolutely him, again, agree. Another character. He's going to be in it. Cause he's in the intro so. story, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I love about that too. The intro kind of shows you all these different things. And it doesn't give anything away. It just goes to show like what's going to I happen. I love that. I love that in shows. I really yeah, do because it's and you have our space coming, and it's like I forgot they escaped. They escaped uh, yeah. last year, yeah. and it's just crazy. It's just think about they've got Hitler back out in the real world. Yeah, how crazy that is, you know. And and this, but this, this is a, this is this is know. a different Hitler. This is a Hitler that contradicts history, and it's just it's very very interesting. You know, first of all, the guy that they that they got to play Hitler is is really good. You know Noah what I mean? Taylor, I think, right? Um, I'm trying to look for his name real quick, but yeah, I, I, th- that that guy's amazing. And Ian Coletti is, is amazing. I mean, these two and, and their scenes that they went, everything they went through in their journey uh, was amazing. And Ian Coletti, you know, his character is, is our space. So he's got, you know, because he tried to kill himself. Right. Uh, he's got a hole. His mouth is like, there's no lips. It's all sewn up. And when he speaks, they put subtitles there. You know, it's just it's just an unforgiving, like, way to depict someone. And it's just, Jesse sent him to hell because he had Genesis and he said, go to hell. Just <laughs> he a, fr- a turn of phrase hell. that everyone says, yeah. you know, when they're yeah. mad at someone. 
Yeah, and then that was that was the first real power that 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 was the first time that the power really like he was like oh dang I have this thing yeah I think I think that he was like this is for real wow yeah um all right so look let's I think let's wrap it up for this for this time uh we did cover a lot Th- this episode has been a little bit longer so if you stuck in thank you very much for stay- sticking around and watching it um we did have to get through three episodes but uh so next week you know um well we'll come back and we'll we'll do just one episode uh so we'll cut down the time a little bit on that um yeah i mean this has been great tom you know thank you for being here appreciate it i'm glad you're doing this with me fun very fun yeah tommy and i talk about this stuff all the time we're always like and i'm always like why don't you come and do this on our show you know so uh and i wanted to do the preacher on the on you know for third person because it's it's some obviously third season and it's an amazing show and, and i wanted to talk about it so and i think for me personally um you know, I'm going to say this, Chris, and I apologize. You look at shows like The Walking Dead. You know how I feel about that show. And We're all and, kind of feeling it, man. And, well, as bad as it is, it continues to get astronomical numbers, even at its worst. And you have shows like Preacher and Legion and Mr. Robot, mm-hmm. um, going back to the leftovers, of course, that struggle to get that audience, to find that audience, when they're the ones that really deserve it because the people behind these shows, even the show that, that you cover uh, Into the Badlands, where – these are some brilliantly creative people yep. that their story's not being heard. So I think this, I feel I'm very passionate about doing Preacher at least because, you know, if it helps them in some way, bring more viewers, that's then we've done our job, I think. And people that's need it. to see like, this show is, is one of these shows, like the other ones I mentioned, that are work, they're work of art. Yeah. They're not just people punching a clock and doing lazy writing. I mean, every scene is is thought out and so with the details so carefully that um and the writing and and again you're translating from source material and it's very really, it's very hard to keep people happy when you're doing that and this is a show that is doing that i think so yeah people i think are generally you think you read the comics i think that they're they're happy for the most part yeah. where it's going um even though they don't follow it to the t which they know they can't um i think they've just done an amazing job so and uh, hopes that uh we can really you know help it up yeah, so Help it never it has to be saved by Amazon. Yeah. Like The Expanse, another great sci-fi show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, you haven't even gotten to that. And Colony, by the way. I've watched, for two, I've watched the first episode of both of those, so I'll have to get back into that. I'm still trying you to catch up on show. season one of Legion. Yeah. You know, but start with yeah. Preacher. We're going to start with something. Yeah, start get, it, Preacher, get it on okay. Preacher. You know, if, if we grow this channel more, then, then perhaps we can get more of these shows on here um, and we can talk about them. But, hey, we're doing what we can. So... Having said all that, um, you know, let us know what you guys, I know you guys will, let us know what you guys think in the comments. Let us know if you haven't watched the show yet or if you just started watching the show, how you feel about this season compared to the other seasons, what you, who's your favorite character, what, give us your theories. Like, you, you guys know the drill. You guys are awesome. Uh, we, have an, we have an amazing community. Uh, we, you know, we do love you guys. Mike and I are always saying thank you, you guys. We love you guys. You guys are great. Keep it up. Keep it coming. Uh, get to us you can also get to us you know on, on any of the socials at third person pod right. uh if you're watching this thank you very much on youtube if you're listening to us on itunes or stitcher just third person podcast um or google play you can go check us out there so uh anyway you're getting this thank you very much we do we do appreciate it and uh that's it we will see you next time on uh this another episode for preacher so that's it peace out thanks everybody